Let's take this outside with Marianne Iveson, the podcast where she speaks to athletes, outdoor professionals, and scientists about why they connect with nature. Jeff Jenkins is an award-winning travel and food blogger, speaker, podcast host, and influencer based out of Austin, Texas. Jeff most recently is proud to add travel documentarian to his list of adventures as he stars in Never Say Never with Jeff Jenkins, a show that explores diverse cultures, locations, and overcoming fears backed by National Geographic. His energy is infectious. Please enjoy my chat with Jeff Jenkins. Jeff Jenkins, welcome to Let's Take This Outside. Oh my God, you're entered, like you're so cute and your smile. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here today. Oh, I know you only have a little bit of time, but I was like, you're, you're, you have an assistant. So fancy said the sub. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout outs to Tani. She's amazing. I love her to death. So I saw your stuff on Instagram and I instantly fell in love with your energy and your passion for the outdoors. Like no wonder you have a TV show, but I'm assuming it's that, that positivity that has probably got you this far. Oh, well, this is the first time anybody's ever like just called it out. But yes, I think I think so. Um, I tell people all the time it's my superpower. I actually was listening to a book that Kevin Hart wrote today. And that was the first thing he talked about when he was talking about like achieving some goals. Uh, he was saying positivity and having like a positive mindset around things actually get you further than not. You ooze that positivity. And I, I know life isn't just positivity and rainbows, and especially the last few years, but you ooze the positivity and joy. So I like, I needed to have that on my podcast. So uh, I, I appreciate that. You know what's interesting though? What's that? Sometimes people don't want my like non positivity, like even a little bit. I was like, oh, okay, okay, great. People don't even want to know like, like any, some of the struggles and things that I, because even to do a TV show and all the stuff that I am doing, it's grueling. It's taxing. And some people don't even want to hear that. They were like, no, no, no. Just, just tell me all the glitter and rainbows. I was like, okay. Okay. Well, Jeff, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the real stuff. I just want you. I want that authenticity. I want the realness today. So that's what we're going to do. Is that okay? Oh, for sure. I got okay. you. I I got okay. you. I got you. First of all, you were a high school choir teacher, right? That's what you started out doing? Yep. I did that for nine years. Okay. How old are you now? 37. Okay. We're almost around the same age. It's just, it's wild. I'm on my second career as well. So it's just like a crazy Come on. Thing. I love it. I love yeah. it. How does someone go from high school choir teacher to traveling the world, getting paid to do it? You know, it's a, dr it's a dream come true for many people, but like you said, grueling and not as easy as it looks. Yeah. Um, I, and I just had a conversation with somebody yesterday about this, but it's like, what was a traumatic experience that happened to your life that got you to where you're at now? And I was like, what? And I didn't even think about it when my friend asked me that question, because my friend asked me that question. And I realized it was my stepfather passing and he died at like 53. And it was, I was like, yo, that's like 20 something years away. Like, I was like, is this what I really want to do for the rest of my life? And I resigned from teaching after that school year because I was like, I want to do more. I know I don't want to just sit here. And so I thought I was going to get into something else. I did meet somebody and who's a good friend of mine now. The day I met him, he asked me, he's like, you ever thought about being an entrepreneur? And I was like, you know what? No, I haven't. And he was like, but I should, I should probably become one. Like I can, I can make my own money. And I was like, wow. But I went on a mission trip to Rwanda. We went and built uh, gardens. And while we were there building gardens, me and my friends came back and was like, yo, these people in this community in Rwanda needs uh, water. And so we started a water well project. None of us is engineers. I didn't know how water came out of the ground. So the fact that we were able to, go and build these water wells from like taking the idea to going back to Rwanda to go build these water wells. That's where that hypeness came in of like, yo, I can do whatever. <laughs> like, what is it that I truly want to do? And so that's what got me down the path of asking myself the question. Like if money wasn't an option, if whatever you were to dream up was to actually happen for you, what would you do? And I remember giving myself three days. It took three days to like come to this conclusion of I wanted to travel the world, help people and get paid to do it. And that's where I committed that day uh, back in 2000. And it was May of 2018. 
that that's what I was going to do. And that's when I got into travel journalism and travel blogging and Instagramming. And here's the thing, the fact that you've built that so fast, again, I couldn't imagine how much grueling work that is. But one of the main things I like to talk about on this podcast is making the outdoors more accessible for everyone, more inviting. And I'm assuming that's kind of why you started Chubby Diaries and the work you've done to try to help others see their potential, right? So it was Chubby Diaries kind of where it started with like the travel blogging and like, or was that kind of, did that kind of come later? No, it was, it was from the beginning in a sense, because it was, it was a place of like, Hey, you need to find a niche. Like everybody kept saying it, like find a niche, find a niche. And I remember even when you were thinking about a niche, like, Oh, I don't want to pigeonhole myself. I don't want to like isolate people. I ended up coming up with like my cousin who actually helped me. She's a PR rep. She gave me this brand branding like worksheet to fill out and it helped me like figure out like what I want my brand to be, what I want my talk to be about. And I was like, I don't even have anything like I can't come up with anything. Like I don't see anything from the branding worksheet. She was like, no, it's right there. She was like, talk about being fat and black. And I was like, oh, yeah. I can't do that. Cause, and then it, it, it hit me even then that I was like, and it was more so on that plus size side where it was like, yo, I don't know anybody talking about traveling around the world and, and being out, like just being outside as a plus size person and talking about their experiences doing it. And that's when I just felt like I was just inundated with all of these different ideas and was like, yo, I'm, we might be onto something here. And I felt really uncomfortable. I don't think I've ever said this to anybody. I actually was very uncomfortable to actually talk about this because there's so much stigma that goes around with with weight. And uh, even when I told one of my family members, like, hey, this is what I'm doing. He was like, why don't you just teach people how to lose weight and you don't actually have to have this site? And I was over there like, well, because there's so many other sites out there that are teaching people how to lose weight. I want to talk to the person where they're at now. I'm not talking to the future self or the old self. I'm talking to the person where they're at right now. I want to humanize this human experience that I'm having and that other people are having. For women, we're just all sorts of messed up about our bodies. I'm sure you know that. But like elite, like for women, we openly talk about it. I was born in 88. I was looking back at some of the ads from like the 90s and 2000s or the movies and all the, all the media that came out that just, no, no wonder we have so many issues and so like we're so self-conscious. But at least women openly talk about it. Men, I think it's totally different. I think it's a totally different level of like shame and insecurity that you're maybe not allowed to talk about. Am I, am I, am I close? Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say not to talk about. It's just, you just don't talk about it. Like, it's just, you don't feel like you have the permission to talk about it. And if you do, you probably could get isolated or embarrassed by it. Tell me about some of the the stories and the messaging that you push around. Like you said, being being fat and black and being outside. And tell me about some of those, how you connect with people and what what messaging are you connecting with people and that you're inspiring people with? Well, yeah. So, so for me, and I, it was really cool. I just I did a campaign partnership today with Life Straw uh, because I, I I wasn't I actually was not into the outdoor space at, at all at first. So even with Chubby Diaries, when we started it, it was all about just traveling around the world. You know, like internationally, it wasn't. It was when I started working with Life Straw. and I started like we did a couple of trips, Life Straw and. I started realizing, I was like, yo, like, it's so beautiful to be outside. Like I was, there were stigmas for me around going outside. Like, like I'm not, I'm not fit enough to go do a hike with somebody. I feel like I'm going to be the one left behind uh, if I go hike with these so folks because they're all straight body or fit and uh, look like they can do like 12 mile hikes, steep mountains, like in, in Canada somewhere, you know what I'm just saying? Like in Banff. Like, you'd be like, wait, I can't do that. But it was when I was on those trips that I started realizing I started adding those same, like, techniques or those same mindsets around, like, you know what? I can move at my own pace. I don't actually have to be embarrassed. I can even communicate with people because that's all it takes, too. Uh, I can communicate with people beforehand, like, hey, y'all can go ahead without me. Y'all can go before me. And usually somebody always wants to stay, stick back anyway. And they'd be like, hey, man, you know, I ain't want to go that fast either. 
Uh, and so <laughs> <laughs> they're always, always people are too, people are too embarrassed to say they're like, now I'm just like, I call it my rest girl phase. I'm like, I'm just in my rest girl phase. I just want to go slow and take my time. Smell the flowers, yeah, right? Come on, come yeah. on. What? Yeah, I was like, before I asked something I would do, like, oh, look at those flowers over there. Oh, look at that. <laughs> like, just try to catch that breath. Right. And, that, and that, was, that was embarrassing back in the day, too. Like, uh, I just had seen a, a video on Instagram not too long ago where – a guy was like taking a deep breath, like he was like breathing really hard. But when somebody passed him, he like at like nothing was happening, and he was like, <laughs> <laughs> like he was breathing normal. And then when the person walked by, he 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 was breathing again, like like breathing really hard. And so that's embarrassing in a way. It felt embarrassing. And so now it's like to me, it's like how do I take all that back? How do I make this like? Wait a minute, I'm outside. All these things that people might even be like, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. You're actually doing it. But you don't have to go at a pace that everybody else is. It takes time. Uh, there are so many examples of that now to where I've seen people who do marathons and they're avid hikers. And they, when they first started, they can only do like a few minutes or only a mile. Now they can do 10, 12 miles easily, you know, like that's their daily thing. And so it's like taking it at your own pace, changing your own mindset, being able to communicate with people like, hey, this is what I'm doing. And this is how I'm going to move or just do it on your own. Like, like, like if you got to go practice, like practice, if you want to say practice, but if you need to go enjoy it on your own, like just go enjoy it on your own and like get better at it because it is possible. That's the one thing I felt like for me that I didn't think was a thing back in the day. Like I've always, I've always felt like I was, like I could do anything I put my mind to. And a lot of times people, I mean, I've gotten this since I was a little kid. I've had people always say to me, they was like, man, I didn't, I didn't know you could do this, Jeff. Like they just surprised. I surprised them every time. Anything like physical activities, work-wise, anything like that. Like they always would be like, man, you know, I didn't think you, like you surprised me. And I, I, and I, I it's usually some kind of bias towards that, you know, but I, I still had this mindset at, at, at times where Oh, this outdoor space is for me. Being outside is for me. And I just, I, I can just move at my own drum instead of trying to move at other people's drums. And you start realizing very quickly, the more I'm out here, the better it becomes, the easier it becomes for me. It can even be less on my joint. I'll be more conditioned. It's, it's, it's all of these different things. And so uh, I just wanted to change that narrative as much as possible. And there's so many people in the outdoor space now that are just killing it even more that I'm just so proud to see, like just out there doing their thing. Let's take this outside now has a newsletter. Keep up to date with outdoor news, events, and great discount codes and deals from our partners. Sign up today at let's take this outside.ca. Once you started playing outside, was there certain things that maybe you noticed that you never noticed before? Like maybe how like a leaf rustled a certain way or re reflected light or maybe just you know those little things or the way um the bird sound or was there any like spe very specific outdoorsy things that you connected with that you didn't notice before in your in your everyday life you know i, I mean i grew up going outside actually like in uh, i grew up in florida um, before orlando had like started like really building up there was a lot of forest around like uh, I live here in Texas now. I was like, man, y'all don't have forests like anywhere. Like, <laughs> I don't see the woods anywhere, any place here. Like, it's it's interesting. But so yeah, I used to always be outside then. So I've always been connected in some way with nature. It wasn't until I went to Pikes Peak, and this was before I was still teaching at the time. I went to Pikes Peak uh, out in Colorado Springs, and when I tell you going to the top of that mountain is like one of the largest like mountain peaks here in Austin or in, in United States that you can go up to and 14,000 feet, I think something in the sky over 14,000 oh, feet. Fly. And to be able to see, yeah, to be able to see the valleys and the rivers and the trees. I, I mean, literally it took me two days to process that whole thing. 
Like it took over that. I mean, it might've even been longer, but it literally like I was in awe. I was in so much awe and so thrown. Like, I mean, you talk about your, your mind being blown. It literally was blown. Like it was broken. Like I didn't, I couldn't, I mean, my brain was trying to find ways to do it, but it was in that moment that I realized to myself, like, wow, like there's so much beauty out here in the world, so much beauty out here just in our backyards that I don't, I take for granted. And so it's like, you have to slow down and see a lot of this stuff. And even when I'm like traveling or, or hiking and stuff now, like since I am moving at a slower pace, I am being able to see a lot more and then enjoy a lot more. Even when I get to the top of something like you're like, Oh my gosh, this is just incredible. Like climbing up to Mount Rainier. Like, like I was like, Oh, this is beautiful. You know? <laughs> I actually saw that you went rock climbing in the Adirondacks. So I'm actually like a few hour drive. Like it's one of my, it's actually my fa- one of my favorite places within driving distance. I go all the time. I'm going in a wow. couple of weeks, but I saw that you went, I saw that you went rock climbing in the Adirondacks and I was like, that takes stones. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was the, it was the most terrifying, but most proudest things I've ever done. Like I never, once again, I've never seen anybody remotely my size rock climb. So to me, like I still, I had no examples. And so even with the TV show, that's the one thing I wanted to do. I wanted to be that representation to so many people. Like, like I wanted to be that representation. Okay. You know why I haven't seen anybody do it, Jeff? Because you haven't done it yet. I have to put it in my own, or if I haven't seen it, guess what? You can be the first one to go out there and do it and show other people that they can go do it too. So you have this TV show, Never Say Never, with Jeff Jenkins on National Geographic, which is mind-blowing. Okay, this is this is like the media person in me and wants to know this. Before we talk about the show, do you remember the feeling when you got that call, that email, or it was a meeting that told you, hey, Jeff, um, you booked this show with, National Geographic. Do you remember that moment? Okay, back me up one more time. That that I actually got the show? Yeah, oh. yeah. That moment where they said, hey, Jeff, you booked this show. We're doing the show. Yeah, um, yeah, I remember that. Uh, I was actually at the airport. I've been waiting maybe four months to to get the green light for the show. I already had signed contracts and all. I can sign, you can sign a contract and still not get the show, which is mind blowing. It it was interesting. Yeah, I was at the airport. We were in the Delta Lounge. We were going to Cabo, New Mexico to to do a campaign and just to relax with my wife. And uh, the guy called me and was like, from our production studio, and was like, hey, Jeff, unfortunately, man, you're stuck with us for the next at least two years. And I was like, <gasps> my heart dropped. And I was like, confused. Like, <laughs> at the same time. So I think it kind of dampered it a little bit, but I was, cause it was so confusing. You're trying to process like, wait, wait, what are you, what are you, what are you saying right now? Okay. Okay. Wait, are you saying this, this is it? Yeah. So I was, I was filled with uh, joy. I was overwhelmed. I went through a lot of emotions, even in that moment. It was one of those surprise things too. Like, or I have to keep this secret because they didn't make the announcement of like, it, like it, it was one of those things like, yeah, you're, you you can't tell everybody. You only could tell like my closest, like family, friends. That was it. So I wanted to tell everybody at the Delta Lounge that, hey, I got a TV show now coming. <laughs> so you wanted to go, wait, imagine you went up to like the speaker, like the PA and you're like, excuse me, everyone. I have a show. Mm-hmm. Have yes, show. exactly. Excuse, excuse, excuse me. me, everyone. <laughs> also, Attention. Bob, you are missing your flight. <laughs> By the way. <laughs> Okay, with Never Say Never, you're exploring. I know you don't have a lot of time, so I'm trying to fit this all in here. Okay, you're exploring the world, experiencing different cultures, and doing super fun outdoor activities, right? Like, that's the whole the whole point of this. What activity did you fall in love with that maybe you hadn't tried before? Did you just stump me? Well, I think you did. What? what? Uh, <laughs> did I just wet you? Stump me. Oh, did like, I stump you? Oh, I did not mean to do yeah. that. Oh, I didn't Ooh, mean to do you that. You got me. That's a good Whoa. question. Good question, Marianne. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um I thought this like I have a question, another question that might actually be okay. Let's do this one first. What okay, act- go, go, what go. activity did you hate and will never do again? <laughs> um well, I mean, I hated it because yeah, I won't I don't even see myself getting on another kayak anytime soon. <laughs> I can I can still kayak. 
shit. But it was, I was doing white water kayaking in New Mexico. I think we were in Taos at the time. And I mean, I almost lost my life doing it. Uh, and I was like, yep, I'm good. I won't be doing this activity again. But then also like suspension bridge, like, like I was on a suspension bridge over a mile in the sky. Uh, there was like wood planks that was like separated. So you had to cross each one. And it was, it was, is why it was one of those like why kind of moments. Glad I did it. Cool. If you like to do stuff like this, but uh, I, I don't see myself ever getting back up there and doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I think, I think the thing that like, for me, it's not that I, there's, Stuff that I've seen that I didn't like. Well, I do like white water rafting. That's fun. I've but I've done it before. There's a lot of things that I've done before that I just liked and it just like fell in love a little bit more with it. Ooh, I would say doing more timber sports. What's what's what do you mean timber sports? What do you mean by that? So so that same episode with the rock climbing and the Adirondacks, like I went and did like the timber sports, like the lumberjack. Oh, d- oh yeah, uh, damn like sports cool. and stuff like. Yeah, so like doing, doing like the sawing, learning how to like create a fire and doing the, the whole like 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 build a fire in less than like build a fire and have a water boiling in four minutes. That's mind blowing to me. So it's it's really cool to do all that stuff, and there's a competition to all that. Did you have like a Neanderthal moment, like just like just smash? Like did you have like a Jeff build fire moment, like a very like Neanderthal? <laughs> Oh, I did that. I did that in the episode when my brother had came over, had finally met up with me, and we were in front of a fire. I built that fire. I don't even think they told me to build the fire. I don't yeah, even yeah. remember. I was like, I'm building the fire. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, yeah. And I, th- <laughs> so that was cool. Oh, you know what? I would say the martial arts in, in Japan. That was actually a lot of fun, and that was something I'd never done before. But that was things I was thinking to myself, like, how do I stay active in a way to where, like, I'm moving my body and stretching it in ways that are fun? You don't even realize you're doing it. So, Do you have any activities? And This is probably a stupid question because it's obvious that the answer is yes. But do you have any bucket list things you want to try or places that you want to go? Or maybe trips coming up that are that you're really excited for. Yes, let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> are you not allowed no, to no, tell no, me? No, 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 no. I was joking. I was joking. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, I still want to go to Antarctica. Like that's like top of my list. Oh, yeah. Possibly cool. do that cold plunge. I still want to like what is it? Skydive. Like skydiving is still on my list of things to do, and we will have to create a whole system just to be able to have me do it. But skydiving is still on my list. Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's a couple of things out there still that I, I kind of want to do. But yeah, like, I think visiting more national parks and hiking some of them, like doing the Half Dome, like stuff like that, like that that's stuff that's on my list of things to do, too. I saw that. I think you were just in Vancouver. Is that true? Uh yeah 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 yeah. I, I was I was there uh not recently, but I just posted about it. Okay, you just posted about it. Have you spent a lot of time in Canada like our Canadian Rockies or any do you do you know a lot about? I I know about it, but I've never been like Banff like I got to get there like I don't know what I got to do. I just got to get there. And I want to do the uh have you heard of Rocky Mountaineers? The, the, train? the train? Yeah, of course I know oh. people have done it. Oh, yeah. I got to I got to do that experience too. I imagine because actually my sister lives in Calgary, which is super close to to Banff. Ooh, Alberta. Alberta. Yeah, you know Alberta. I've been there a billion times. When you go, can can I come and we can like hike together? And sure. We can and we can we can film it. It'd be ridiculous. I would love that. I, I would love that. I know it sounds like I'm joking, but I'm not joking. I think we'd have a lot of fun. <laughs> I think we'd have a lot of fun with this. Let's do it. Let's yeah, do yeah. it. Okay. Tell me about a place you would encourage people to travel to that they may not have thought about. Uh, Glacier National Park. Easily. Hands down, my favorite national park in America. Uh, Ooh, or Grand Teton. I like both of those places. Grand Teton, actually, uh, it might edge Glacier out. Ah, nah. Yeah, it does a little bit. Uh, Like, if you were camping, going to the Grand Tetons, Definitely is like one of the coolest things ever. But Glacier National Park, like I felt like 
every time you went around a corner in the car, like like you just you just saw beauty on top of beauty on top of beauty, and that's that's something that I just feel like people should experience more. I feel like a lot of people of color uh, here in America or in the states haven't truly like explored our national parks and at one point it was it was frowned upon to even go to them so i have friends who've like who've never been to a national park and i have friends who have been to a whole bunch of national parks but it was based all off a of race like who went and who hasn't gone can you explain that a little bit more yeah like just i mean just in our nation like we've had just just different discrimination um and to where it was like Taking a road trip across country, especially to us an area that's not familiar to most Black people, we usually would stay away from that, so, and we would go to places that we deemed safe to travel to. I was just telling my buddy yesterday, last night actually, it was crazy. I just had this epiphany yesterday that I was like, "Wow, there are states that like Black people in America just be like, nah, I ain't going there, and like." Like, it's really hard for us to go, like, or say that we want to go to, but for people to, that aren't, aren't Black and stuff like that, like, they don't think nothing of it. Like, like going to Alabama, like, oh, that's just Alabama. But for me, and like, I mean, I can meet a random Black person that I've never met before, and if we tried to, like, if I just mentioned Alabama or Mississippi, there's some kind of hesitation to it. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you. And hopefully you exploring and getting out there and showing representation will hopefully encourage others to feel more empowered to do so, right? Oh, for sure. And and things have changed somewhat. Uh, it's just as we continue to be that representation, yeah, like you said, like that's when people can actually see, like I am putting myself out there in some ways to be like, is this safe? Is this something that you can go do? And I'll tell you if it's not. <laughs> Jeff Jenkins, thank you so much for taking time for me today and your authenticity and your kindness and your smile just like absolutely made my day. Um, and I, yeah, I can't wait to, uh, to see the show and I can't wait to see where, where all of this brings you. I appreciate you. Like this is, is really, really cool to, to be able to speak on like this subject. And I always like to tell people, and I say this all the time, is that like, I'm not here to promote obesity. Like my my mission is to to get people to live life now, no matter their size, and just get out there and just enjoy life because a lot of times people feel like things aren't made for them. And I'm trying to show them like, yo, there's a whole world out here just for you that you can go explore. And so I just appreciate you for having me on today. Thanks for listening. For more Let's Take This Outside, go to Let's Take This Outside. Produced and distributed by the Sound Off Media Company.